Hi, my name is Andrea Parado, and I'm a certified dementia practitioner. And I'm here with Natalie Hansen, who is also a certified dementia practitioner. Hi. Hi, Natalie. Hello. We are going to talk about the love languages today because we feel that the deep human need for love does not diminish just because of a dementia diagnosis. So let's talk a little bit about the love languages. What are they? Well, we have five different love languages. They're the words of affirmation, uh, gifts, receiving of gifts, acts of service, acts of service, quality time, and physical touch. Yes. That's it. Yes. So what is words of affirmation? They're unsolicited compliments given to you. Um, oh, those, those atta girls and atta boys and good jobs. Yeah. Okay. So what's gifts? Receiving gifts, obviously, kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. Just any type of, it can be a little token, doesn't have to be anything huge or anything, just a little token just to show that I appreciate you and I love you. And my favorite kind are the homemade ones. Yes. Because I, I feel those. like there's more effort put there's into that, more into love and meaning put into it. What else is there? Well, there's our quality time, spending time with somebody. Um, <clears throat> giving somebody your undivided attention is so important and just, it shows that you care when you take the time to spend some quality time with, with someone. Listening and just maybe even quiet, yeah. right, is quality time. Yeah. Just sitting in silence with somebody in a comfortable silence can be very, very, um, make you feel good. Yes. What else is there? Our acts of service, doing something helpful for another person, to, uh, something as little as just setting the table when dinner's ready. Um, or oh, that is nice. Yeah, or... Um, Dropping somebody off at the door to the store when it's raining outside. Oh, that is a great act of, act of service. It just happened to me this week. Or if somebody just comes and does my dishes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or, or cleans my house. <laughs> yes. I like acts of service. That's a nice one. And then you have your physical touch, too. Just a simple touch of the hand, holding hands. High fives. High fives. Um, shoulder rub. Back rub. So those yeah. are always good. What's your love language? My love language is um, words of affirmation. Oh, so you like those Atta girls, the I good like jobs. I like the girls. Tell me I'm doing a good job. You like yeah. to hear it. You need that that reinforcement. Yeah. Uh, mine's quality time. I like to spend time with people just like this. <laughs> this is my thing. Um, but I can also be very hurt if somebody doesn't really act like they want to listen to what I have to say or, or seems impatient and doesn't really want to spend that time with me that I, that I need. Yeah. Um, are there things that kind of hinder you when it comes to your, uh, words of affirmation? Um, I think the unlistening, like if somebody doesn't like, doesn't take the time to listen and stuff like or that. Or has negative things to say it's instead of positive. Say, yeah. So what does all this mean for dementia? Well, with dementia, you have to realize that it's hard sometimes for them to express love back. So love's like a one-way road. A, a little bit, yeah. Um, I feel like it's not that they can't show love in their own way. Okay. Um, you may come up to somebody, say, I love you, express love, and they, you know, give them a kiss, and they may not be able to give it back. But there could be that little, like they feel the love. Okay, the, so that makes sense. So if you love somebody and say their love language, and you can figure out what it is and say like your person that you're caring for has dementia and you know that um, physical touch, say, is their love language, um, helping them feel the feeling of love instead of the words of love. Right by maybe holding their hand or snuggling with them on the couch or just giving them a high five when they did a good job, they walk away with the feeling of being loved versus you saying the words because maybe the words don't resonate as well as they right. used to because of the dementia. Right, exactly. Got it. That and, makes sense. And I think it's so important to, to realize that just because they don't express the love back doesn't mean it's not there. The love for you is still there they just have lost that ability to express it back. Um, somebody explained something to me a while ago, and um, I think it was pretty interesting. So if you imagine 
a quilt, right? And that quilt is made with like thousands and thousands of threads, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you consider every one of those threads a memory, and that quilt that was built over time with all of those memories have interwoven um, into this massive, beautiful um, tapestry. But as the dementia starts to progress and those threads slowly slip, your tapestry starts to unravel and it just becomes harder and harder. Um, and I think that's a really interesting way of putting it because you're literally losing memories. And so sometimes you don't remember your children. Sometimes you don't remember your spouse or you don't remember them in the way that we would think you would remember them. Like, you know, they're not really 70 or 80 years old in, in my mind with dementia. I'm kind of back in the past, so they should be much younger. And so sometimes I don't even recognize them. But with that being said, um, if I use and find out what my spouse or my father or mother or whoever the family member is, what their love language is, even if they may not remember me, is it possible that I could maybe show them that I love them using their, one of their love using languages? Using one of their love languages. Yeah. Is that possible? I think it is. I think it is. And I think it's, it's also, you know, when you don't recognize that loved one, though, I do, in my experience, have re have seen that they recognize how that person makes them feel. It's kind of like, you know, they walk into a room and it's, I'm not sure who you are, but you resonate that. You belong to me. That type you belong feeling. to me. Yeah. And that it's like, I'm not sure who you are, but I feel like you belong to me. Or I feel like, you know, they just resonate that love back. Right. I, I feel that too. And I feel that dementia can drive an emotional wedge between family members and friends. Um, but is it possible to reestablish some sort of um, emotional connection with a person who has dementia? I think it is. And like you said, it's using their love language. Right. To will help re it reestablish that. And, it, and, and you might say, well, how do I know what their love language is? And that's through thinking back kind of through your experience with that person and kind of seeing what who they were before the dementia yeah and what they expressed you know like if you went away on a trip and they asked you and they and you came back and you had nothing for them and they're like where'd you bring me and you're like nothing nothing and they're like oh right okay. so, oh so maybe they liked gifts I get where you're going with that yeah I get where you're going with that the so, husband that um, always cleaned up the dishes and stuff after dinner because, you know, I cooked the dinner, but so he would clean up the dishes as a wonderful act of service. And it's, it made me feel appreciated. I guess that act of, acts of service would kind of be my love language. Right. So maybe doing those little things for me when you come to visit me or if I'm living with you might actually help me feel appreciated and loved, even though, again, the words may not resonate as well. Right. I believe that in the absence of positive connection, the disease can progress rapidly and that people just don't live as long. If there's no love and positive interactions in their life, it literally helps reduce stress. Love helps reduce stress in both parties. Yeah. You know, um, and it also helps with body inflammation. That's crazy. I mean, that's, that's your health. So why not find somebody's love language? Um, severe isolation is at least as deadly as smoking. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And that those with more and higher quality relationships are at a lower risk for a host of illnesses, including heart disease and stroke. So human interaction, social interaction are extremely important as well as making, trying to maintain that personal and intimate relationship with somebody who is living with dementia. Having strong friendships and family connections actually reduces your risk for early death more than exercising and avoiding obesity does. Um, that's pretty crazy. And as a bonus for most of us, it's way more fun and it takes way less willpower <laughs> just to be, just to love. Yeah. It doesn't take, it doesn't take cardio. It doesn't take, you know, a whole lot of work. It's just, loving someone, which is great. So Natalie, I really think that there is a painful urgency of loving someone with dementia. Every day is their best day. 
Do we expect tomorrow to be better than today? Probably not because we don't know what tomorrow will bring. Um, so we never know that tomorrow there's going to be guaranteed that it's going to be a better day. So we have to just take every day as their best day. Um, so I think that that feeling of love will continue to persist even after the actions of the person or the words of the person um, that delivered that love message are forgotten. Uh, in other words, if I went to visit my, my husband or my dad and I was telling him how much I loved him and showing him how much I loved him with his love language, um, after I left, he may forget that I visited, right? He may forgot that I was even there that day. But that feeling of being loved is still there, right? That yeah. that it lingers. It yeah, I think so. Yeah, right, I do. So, what if the person you love eventually becomes unable to reciprocate that love or show you that love? I think that's a, a hard thing to to do to, to continue to to love um, love somebody with dementia love somebody that with, can't love you back. Can't love you back. I can't imagine. Um, I think you got to look for those little things during the day or during the visit. You know. Um, it might be a little, you know, touch of the hand or, or something like that, that they respond to or whatever. Um, and if it, it, you just, it, you just continue to love it and it makes them feel good too. Right. Um, Maybe that day they weren't as agitated when you were there or they allowed you to, um, care for them easier than on other days, which yeah. would be more of like one of those best days, but maybe they actually, you know, feel that love more deeply or you're expressing it more deeply. And so it allows you to do a little bit more with them. Um, and it's a little bit easier. You no, know, just responding to your conversation with them. That's and also kind important. Of, kind of like when they respond to you, that can, you know, show, show a little bit of love there too. Like, yeah. Because sometimes they will completely ignore you. It's very selfless to, to love somebody with with dementia. I think it's extraordinary choice to continue to love someone with dementia, especially when that person cannot show you love in return. That walking away with that feeling has got to be probably one of the hardest things to deal with. Um, I can't, I can't even imagine, but let's take a step back for a second. I don't feel like dementia just suddenly, um, ends a person's capacity to experience love. I feel that people with Alzheimer's and dementia do retain that, that capacity to experience love. And I think that if we started to incorporate those love languages, if we can figure their love language out, which I don't think that would be very hard. Um, I think that it may actually help make every day their best day. Um, how do you, how do you figure that out? The love language. You have to go on past experiences. Like before the dementia. Before the dementia. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm going to think about my spouse and we're like 80 now, and I have to think back before the dementia started, right? So I would have to go maybe back even 10 years and think about what, like how they like to be. How they responded to maybe different things that you've done for them. Oh, okay. You know, like if you've given them a compliment, how they responded to that, or if you've given them a gift, how, you know, wh which way did they respond most positively? Okay. Um, so like if I went on vacation all the time and didn't bring my loved one home a gift and they were just like all like sad, that would maybe kind of indicate that maybe they were that person that really enjoyed having gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Or if maybe they did the dishes for me every day and I felt super appreciated by that it would show that I like those acts of service. Yeah. I think, um, celebrating this person and what he or she has meant in your life, recalling their history, their accomplishments, um, their unique personality. If you are even so inclined, you can put these thoughts in writing so that you can re reread them on those days that maybe not, may not be my best day or, um, maybe on days that is my best day. And those are the days that I may be listening more closely but reminiscing about, you know, who we were and our love that we had for each other in the past, um, I think can be very beneficial. Um, on a strictly neuroscientific perspective, 
um, the importance of relational intimacy between dementia patients and care partners may boil down to four natural happy chemicals that we have in our brain. And it makes these chemicals in response to that social interaction, um, that social connection. And those are um, endorphins are released when we laugh. Serotonin levels increase when I feel significant or important. And not so surprisingly, one of the hallmarks of depression is absence of Serotonin. Serotonin. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Oxytocin is produced when we are hugged and when we feel um, loved and we receive gifts. Two of the love languages right there. That's amazing. And then, of course, um, dopamine rewards and reinforces all of those pleasurable behaviors, encouraging us to repeat them. So just using those love languages and making a per person feel loved and having those social interactions with them is actually healthy. It's really good for you and it makes you feel good. And it might actually help lift that dark curtain of dementia that that individual, that, that, that journey that they've been you know, put upon with, with that dementia, um, and actually make them feel good and give them that, that fulfillment that they may possibly need. So with all that being said, everything that we just talked about, why is this so important to us? I think that, um, all of these love languages are great and wonderful ways to say that I love you, but there is a small little tiny problem. Most of us actually use our own love language to project onto others because um so like you you like receiving gifts so it is probably very automatic for you to show somebody appreciation by giving them a little token or a gift or when you go on vacation you bring them you know back those souvenirs because that's your love language speaking another person's love language actually is what makes them feel loved not that they don't appreciate the token of love, that they don't appreciate the gift that you bring them. As personally, I think I have all five love languages. That's just me. I, um, I but I think that um, intentional love, if it's spoken consistently, if it's spoken fluently, and it's spoken in the right language, will actually deepen a relationship. It will actually help equip it for those storms that are likely to inevitably come in life. Um, I think that the re relational trauma that occurs with um, dementia happens because the person with the disease loses the ability to manage his side of the relationship, his or her side of the relationship. Um, that and it, and it forces kind of that emotional wedge sometimes because I can't keep up my part of the relationship. I can't keep up the, the, the love portion of the relationship, the intimacy part of the relationship, be that as it may. Um, so it, it becomes really, really difficult on that, on that love scale. So I think that if you can look back before dementia and find out what your loved ones, um, love language it was, I think that you will be better equipped to weather those storms. I think that you will understand that, you know what, loving someone with dementia is a love is a one way road. There is no way to get around that. Um, there are going to be um, emotional barriers. There are going to be relationship barriers. Um, but if you know that and you understand that and you can continue on I just, again, that it's just, it's, it's extraordinary. It's unselfish. And I feel that, um, that person who is living with dementia will, will have that, that dark corner of that curtain lifted and their life will be brighter and it will be better. Um, as long as, you know, you can weather those storms on your end of the relationship and you can, understand your, your own emotions, um, that you could actually have a really good relationship with your, with the partner or your loved one that is living with dementia. Um, as long as you can 
again, understand your emotions and understand that guilt that is also associated with caring for somebody with dementia, which is something that we are going to discuss very soon as well. So thank you for talking about the love languages with me, Natalie. You're welcome.